Gaudapada c. 6th century CE, also referred as Gaudapadakaya, was an early medieval-era Hindu philosopher and scholar of the Vedanta school of Hindu philosophy. While details of his biography are uncertain, his ideas inspired others such as Adi Shankara who called him a Paramaguru highest teacher. Gaudapada was the author or compiler of the Mandukya Karika, also known as Gaudapada Karika. The text consists of four chapters also called four books, of which chapter four uses Buddhist terminology thereby showing it was influenced by Buddhism. However, doctrinally Gaudapada's work is Vedantan, and not Buddhist. The first three chapters of Gaudapada's text have been influential in the Advaita Vedanta tradition. Parts of the first chapter that include the Mandukya Upanishad have been considered a valid scriptural source by the Dvaita and Vishistadvaita schools of Vedanta, but nothing from chapter 4 with Buddhist flavor has found acceptance or use in the Vedanta school of Hinduism. Topic: <laughs> Dates The century in which Gaudapada lived and his life details are uncertain. Estimates vary from early 6th to 7th century CE. He is generally dated from estimates for Adi Shankara, whose teacher Govinda Bhagavatpada is presumed to be the direct disciple of Gaudapada. Shankara in some texts, refers to Gaudapada as the teacher's teacher, who knows the tradition of the Vedanta Sampradaya v. Assuming how long each lived and when, Gaudapada is estimated to have lived sometime in the 7th century CE. Alternatively, states Potter, the phrase, teacher's teacher, should not be taken literally, and more in the sense of another phrase he uses for Gaudapada, namely Paramaguru, highest teacher. He may have been the guru of Sankara's teacher, but was likely a more distant guru, states Michael Comans a.k.a. Vasudhavacharya. Another estimate places him around the early 6th century. This estimate is based on Buddhist literature, and particularly those of scholars Bhavavivika, Santaraksita and Kamala Silla who cite Gaudapada Karikas. Bhavavivika was a contemporary of Dharmapala, states Karl Potter, while Chinese texts and travel accounts place Dharmapala in the mid-6th century CE. Assuming the Buddhist and Chinese records are reliable, and for Bhavavivika to have quoted Gaudapada Karikas, Gaudapada must have lived around 500 CE, or sometime in the first half of 6th century CE. But, it is certain that Gaudapada lived after the 4th century because he cites some Buddhist views of Nagarjuna and Asanga, the latter of whom various accounts place in 4th century India. <laughs> <laughs> Mandukya Karika Authorship <laughs> 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 Gaudapada wrote or compiled the Mandukya Karika, also known as the Gaudapada Karika and as the Agama Sastra. Some scholars, states Karl Potter, doubt that Gaudapada Karika was written by one author. The Mandukya Karika is a concise explanation, in verse form, of the doctrines in Mandukya Upanishad, one of the shortest but a profound Upanishad, consisting of just twelve sentences. Even before the time of Adi Shankara, Mandukya Upanishad was considered to be a sruti, but not one particularly important during his era. In later periods it acquired a higher value, and expressing the Upanishadic essence. The Karika, notably, presents rational arguments from dream states, infinitude and finitude, space and time, causality, disintegration, and generation in support of the Advaita doctrine. The Mandukya Karika is the earliest extant systematic treatise on Advaita Vedanta, though it is not the oldest work to present Advaita views, nor the only pre Sankara work with the same type of teachings. According to Hajimi Nakamura, not only was the Gaudapada Karika treasured in the Advaita tradition, the text was revered and highly respected in Vishistadvaita and Dvaita Vedanta schools of Hinduism as well. Gaudapada's text, adds Nakamura, was treasured but not considered a sruti by Advaita scholars, while Ramanuja and Madhvacharya of non-Advaita schools considered its first chapter to be a sruti. Topic. Contents 
The Gaudapadhyaya Karika has 215 metered verses which are divided into four chapters. Chapter 1, 29 verses. Agama or Agama Prakarana, traditional doctrine, includes 12 verses of the Mandukya Upanishad. Chapter 2, 38 verses. Vaitathya Prakarana, unreality. Chapter 3, 48 verses. Advaita Prakarana, non-duality. Chapter 4, 100 verses. Alatasanti Prakarana, the piece of the firebrand. Chronologically, according to Hajime Nakamura, the Buddhist texts that quote from Gaudapada Karikas imply that the Vedantic ideas in the first three chapters are of greater antiquity. Most of Chapter 3 of the compilation of Gaudapada Karika was complete by 400 to 500 CE, states Nakamura. He estimates that most of Chapter 1 was complete by 300 to 400 CE, while Chapter 2 which presupposes Chapter 1 can be dated to have been mostly complete after Chapter 1 but before Chapter 3. Most of the Chapter 4 was written sometime between 400 and 600 CE. Topic. Chapter 1, Traditional Doctrine Agama. The self resides in one's body in three forms, waking state, sleeping dreamy state and in deep sleep state, according to Potter's translation. When awake, the self experiences the vishva, the external objects and the visible, when dreaming, it experiences the taijasa, the internal mind objects and what appears in the dreams, when in deep sleep, the self experiences prajna, the unpolarized, the fruits of the heart and bliss. The description of these states of self are similar, states Arvind Sharma, to those found in Brihadaranyaka Upanishad and other ancient Hindu texts. Gaudapada presents the competing traditional theories about life in vogue, before and in his times, in Karika 6 through 9. Some claim creation is the result of the expansion of the self, some claim it is a mere magic show, some claim the creation is from God's desire, some claim Kala time creates all beings. In Karika 10, the text states there is a fourth state of the self, called Tariya, one of Advaita non-duality, all-pervading, unchanging and without Dukkha sorrow. This fourth state of self in Gaudapada Karika is found in chapters 8.7 through 8.12 of Chandogya Upanishad, which discusses the four states of consciousness. As awake, dream filled sleep, deep sleep, and beyond deep sleep, the Vishva and Taijasa state of self, states Gaudapada, can be a source of cause and effect, the Prajna is only cause, while Tariya state is neither. It is the waking state and dream state that lead to awareness, errors, and unawareness. The perceived duality of the world is Maya, when in reality there is only non duality. Chapter 1 ends with the discussion of the Om and its symbolism for Brahman, and the Atman within the heart of all living beings. Topic. Chapter 2, Unreality Vaitathya. Unreal are the dream objects during sleep, states Gaudapada, because the one who dreams never actually goes to place he dreams of, and because whatever situation he dreams about is something he leaves upon waking up. This is in the scripture Brihadaranyaka Upanishad, in the same sense, the true reality is covered up for man even in his waking state, state Karikas 4-6 of chapter 2, because, translates Potter. Any object non-existent in the beginning and in the end is also non-existent in the middle. When we sleep, we feel the external things we dream about are real and the internal states as unreal, but in the awakened state we realize both are unreal. In the same way, in our waking state whatever we apprehend to be real and unreal are both unreal, covering up the true reality, state Karikas 10-15. But this assertion leads to the obvious question, states Gaudapada, that if both internal and external are not true reality, who is it that imagines, who apprehends them and who cognizes? Gaudapada submits his answer as the Atman self, soul. Gaudapada Karika states that while we do grasp objects, we perceive, we think, but this does not connote the nature of reality and unreality, just like our fear of a rope for a serpent in darkness. 
We construct realities, states Gaudapada, and imagine Javatman to be various things such as prana breath, loka world, deva gods, bhoktr enjoyer, bodja enjoyables, sukshma subtle, sauthula gross, murta material, amurta non-material, and so on. We imagine things in our mind, we create things in our mind, we destroy things in our mind, says Gaudapada. Yet all these things are not different from it. The Atman, gender neutral. All such constructions create dualities in our imagination, a maya. The true reality, state Karikas 33-36, is non-dual and it is Atman. Those who have mastered and grown past all attachments, past all fear and past all anger, they are past all dualities, know their self, have secured the non-duality within. According to Karika 36-38, such wise individuals, do not care about praise from anyone, are beyond all rituals, are homeless wanderers, for they have realized the true inside them and outside, they, translates Potter, remain steadfastly true to nature. <laughs> <laughs> Chapter 3, Nonduality, Advaita Gaudapada opens this chapter by criticizing devotional worship of any form, and states that this assumes that the Brahman Atman is born. He states that the non-dual Brahman Atman self can give rise to apparent duality jivas, individual souls, while remaining unaffected in the process. To this end he gives the analogy of space and jars. Self is like space and the jivas are like space in jars. Just as space is enclosed in a jar, so is the self manifested as jivas. When the jar is destroyed the space in the jar merges into space so likewise, are the jivas one of the self? Gaudapada states that the Upanishads such as the Brihadaranyaka Upanishad teach this, that one's own Atman self is identical to the Atman in other beings, and all Atman are identical with the Brahman. While some Upanishads, acknowledges Gaudapada, imply a difference between individual soul and the Brahman, those texts are discussing the apparent distinction duality when one believes in apparent creation. In reality, states Gaudapada, there is no creation of souls from Brahman as they are identical. We must not confuse passages meant for spiritual instruction. According to Karikas 3.17-18, Gaudapada admits that dualists disagree with this view, but the ancient texts admit duality in the context of appearances, while non-duality is indeed the highest reality. Translates Karmaka, according to Karl Potter's translation of Karikas 3.33-36, an awareness that is without conceptual construction is unborn, and this is identical to the object of that awareness called Brahman. This awareness is not a metaphor, nor born, it is real. Such awareness shines forth without fear, beyond words and thought, is calm and unwavering, equanimous, and full of light. This inner contactless concentration yoga is difficult for most including the yogis, who see fear in what is fearlessly blissful. Such is the awareness that comes from self-reflection, understanding, giving up attachment to dukkha frustration, and sukha pleasure, where the mind rests in indescribable calmness within. Topic. Chapter 4, The Peace of the Firebrand Alatasanti. The last chapter of Gaudapada Karika has a different style than the first three, and it opens by expressing reverence for all the greatest of men, who are like the cosmic space through their awareness of non-duality, free from self-contradictions and confusion, and who understand Dharma. Karikas 3-10 repeat some content from previous chapters, but with some word substitutions. Karikas 11-13 quote the key duality premise of Samkhya school of Hindu philosophy, cross-examines it, then asks how and why is cause eternal. The text states that the Samkhya premise, cause is born as its effect, leads to infinite regress, which is not persuasive. Gaudapada Karika then acknowledges the theory of Ajatavada or non-origination of the Buddhas Buddhists. 
Like Samkhya premise, the text praises and cross-examines it, in three ways. First, non-origination premises makes sense when neither the point of origin nor the end of something is known, but we know the point of origin of any example of something produced and their Ajatavada premise does not follow. Secondly, the Ajatavada premise commits the Sadhyasama fallacy of reasoning by offering examples of what is yet to be proved. Thirdly, state karikas 29-41, neither samsara nor mukti has a beginning or end, because if something is born it must have an end, and something that is unborn has no end. Karikas 45-52 state that only vijnana consciousness is real, explaining it with an example of fire stick before and during the time it burns, and adding we construct and deconstruct our state of awareness. Karikas 53-56 assert that there is no causation, no effects, and repeats that consciousness is the only one real thing. Everything is impermanent, nothing is eternal and everything is also without origination by nature. State Karikas 57-60, Karikas 61-81 repeat text on four states from earlier chapters to re-emphasize the premises about impermanence and non-origination. Attachment to unreality causes desire, sorrow, dukkha, and fear, while detachment leads to freeing from such states and to samadhi. There are three stages of understanding state karikas 87 to 89: laukika, ordinary, which cognizes object and subject as real; shuddha laukika, purified ordinary, perceiving is considered real but not the objects; and lokatara, supramundane, where neither objects nor perceiving are cognized as real. Karikas 90 to 100 presents agriyana, vehicle to knowing. The text states. All dharmas are without beginning, without variety, and are consciousness only. Duality is for the unwise, non-duality and undifferentiated reality is for the wise and difficult to grasp. The last karikas of the chapter 4 ad, translates Karl Potter. This the Buddhas understand, the Buddha instructs us that consciousness does not reach the dharmas, yet the Buddha said nothing about either consciousness or dharmas. Topic. Relationship to Buddhism The influence of Buddhist doctrines on Gaudapada has been a vexed question. One school of scholars, such as Bhattacharya and Rayu, state that Gaudapada took over the Buddhist doctrines that ultimate reality is pure consciousness and that the nature of the world is the four-cornered negation, which is the structure of Maya. Gaudapada wove both doctrines into the philosophy of Mandukaya Upanishad, which was further developed by Shankara. Of particular interest is Chapter 4, in which according to Bhattacharya, two karikas refer to the Buddha and the term Aspasyoga is borrowed from Buddhism. According to Murti, the conclusion is irresistible that Gaudapada, a Vedanta philosopher, is attempting an Advaitic interpretation of Vedanta in the light of the Madhyamika and Yogkara doctrines. He even freely quotes and appeals to them. However, adds Murti, the doctrines are unlike Buddhism. Chapter 1, 2 and 3 are entirely Vedantin and founded on the Upanishads, with little Buddhist flavor. While the first three chapters discuss Brahman and Atman soul, self, chapter 4 doesn't. This, according to Murti, may be because this was authored by someone else and not Gaudapada, a position shared by Richard King. Further, state both Murti and King, no Vedanta scholars who followed Gaudapada ever quoted from chapter 4, they only quote from the first three. According to Sama, Chapter 4 may well have been written by Gaudapada assuming he was fully conversant with Mahayana school's teachings, yet, to mistake him to be a hidden or open Buddhist is absurd. The doctrines of Gaudapada and Buddhism are totally opposed, states Murti. We have been talking of borrowing, influence and relationship in rather general terms. It is necessary to define the possible nature of the borrowing, granting that it did take place. The Vedantins stake everything on the Atman Brahman and accept the authority of the Upanishads. We have pointed out at length the Nairatmya standpoint of Buddhism and its total opposition to the Atman soul, substance, the permanent and universal in any form. Advaitins particularly have traditionally challenged the Buddhist influence thesis. 
Modern scholarship generally accepts that Gaudapada was influenced by Buddhism, at least in terms of using Buddhist terminology to explain his ideas, but adds that Gaudapada was a Vedantin and not a Buddhist. Other works by Gaudapadacharya A number of additional works are attributed to Gaudapada, but their authenticity is uncertain. The attributed works are Abhasya on Brihadaranyaka Upanishad Abhasya on N. Rasimha Tapaniya Upanishad Abhasya on Anugita Durga Saptashati Tika Abhasya on Devi Mahatmya Sri Vidyaratna Sutra Basya Subhagodaya on Sri Vidya Uttara Gita Bhashyagaudapada is also credited with a commentary on Samkhikarakas. According to Potter, the naive nature of this commentary is in sharp contrast to the depth of reflection in Gaudapada Karikas, and the commentary on Samkhikarakas is unlikely to be won by Gaudapada. Advaita Guru Parampara Gaudapada is one of the key persons in the Advaita Vedanta. He is traditionally said to have been highly influential on Adi Shankara, one of the most important figures in Vedic philosophy. Sri <laughs> Gaudapadacharya Math Sri Gaudapadacharya Math, also known as Kavail Matha Kavail Matha, is the oldest Matha of the South Indian Saraswat Brahmins, the Pitadhipathi. Head monk is Sri Gaudapadakaya. Rajapur Saraswat Brahmins and smartest Gud Saraswat Brahmins are its main disciples. <laughs> See also List of math Kashi math Gokana math Chitrapur math Devaita Madhvacharya Notes <laughs>